It's a call that's telling me I'm here to serve. It's a need to make a difference in the world. 24 hours, day or night, these healing hands will make it right. Looking in their eyes, I know that I'm changing lives, changing lives, changing lives for the better, for the better, changing lives. Hi again, everyone. I'm Candace Kruger along with Jim Knox, and we're back again with another edition of the Best Docs Network, featuring some of the best physicians from right here in the Houston area that are changing people's lives. And when you say best physicians, we'll start with one of the best radiologists in the entire Houston area. That's Dr. Stephen Rose. After having met with Dr. Rose, toured the facility and saw the importance of the work on the early detection side, I was compelled to do something more. It's kind of like once you have knowledge to do something, then you have to move forward and make sure that others know about it as well. There are several things that we're looking that, for the foundation to do. One is to continue to fund important research. There's always going to be more things that we can learn and do better. The number two thing is to be able to educate both other physicians and the community, especially the community, so that people begin to understand and participate in the process of screening. Because the sad thing is, in recent years, screening mammography, especially in younger women, has decreased. And now I see women show up who haven't had their mammogram and they have more advanced tumors. I hate seeing that. We also want to try to be able to raise enough money to do more indigent care as well for those who need additional care. So those are the three main areas we're, we're, we're targeting. What I love most is the fact that we're educating other radiologists to read these mammograms so that we can spread the word quickly and also the amount of anxiety that the results of these tests um, provide. Very few people really realize that almost all of the breast cancers are detected in the community. Uh, they're not detected at facilities like MD Anderson uh, for the most part because most people are referred with the diagnosis there. So the research foundation was based on that idea that we, we could fund research in the community and do things that weren't being done elsewhere. Our work is so important. I, I feel that we can take a big bite out of breast cancer incidences if we can move forward with this early detection women who are vigilant about having their mammograms annually using a 3D tomosynthesis procedure can certainly help themselves. And not just for women who are insured, but we would like for every woman to have this available to them. After undergoing a mastectomy, Colleen turned to Dr. Evan Feldman to help change her life. To find out more about Colleen's story and other life-changing stories, log on to BestDocsNetwork.com. Originally, I was having a lot of sinus pressure. Pretty much all the time I had sinus pressure. And I had a lot of headaches. I would have sinus infections pretty much back to back. I'd have several sinus infection, infections a year. Amanda has consulted multiple ready clinic uh, urgent care that does not really address her problem. All they did was to refill her prescription of antibiotics, gave her some antihistamine, and tell her to go home. But what they do is they, they, they treat her symptoms instead of treating the, the, the cause of her problem. He basically just looked at my nose and kind of tried to figure out what the problems were based on the symptoms. And he noticed immediately that my turbinates were really big. The inferior turbinate, it's a normal structure in your nose that everybody has. It has a role of filtering and humidifying the air that you breathe in. So it becomes enlarged and inflamed when it is irritated by either allergies, infection, or pollution in the air. Considering her busy schedule, we decide upon 
uh, two-prong uh, approach treatment. Uh, balloon sinuplasty in office to treat her sinus issue and inferior turbinate reduction to relieve her nasal obstruction. I don't really have any more sinus issues. I haven't had a sinus infection since the surgery and it's been a few months now. The advantage of uh, balloon sinuplasty is that it can be done in office. There is no uh, general anesthesia. The cost is less than doing it in the hospital and the recovery time is really quick. There's really no downtime. The patient can go back to their daily activities uh, quickly. It was, it's actually kind of funny. There's a lot of things that I didn't realize were issues until after the surgery. I know one time I was sitting in my bathroom and I was sitting there and there was a candle about two feet away from me and I actually could smell it. <laughs> that was something that I have never done before and it kind of just hit me. I was like, I can actually smell the candle. <laughs>
You have to prep yourself, which is a little uncomfortable, but it can save your life. You really ought to do it. Check with your doctor about the proper timing for you in your particular medical situation. When, when you talk about Ceci, she's talking about issues that pretty much any lady who has had several children will talk about, that they just feel that their stomach never quite went back to the way it was before. I've been active all my life and in sports throughout high school, my collegiate years, uh, ran track and field and competed in Miss Fitness USA competitions and had a flat stomach for pretty much most of my life. I had three beautiful girls, but with the pregnancies, I had three C-sections also. And so having the flat stomach before and not able to achieve that afterward was kind of like, you know, a punch in the stomach, you know, <laughs> so to speak. And uh, I wanted to do something about it. And you can do all the exercise in the world. You can diet all you want. And you will still find ladies that still say, I just bulge a little bit more than I remember. And why do they? It's because that tissue, that connective tissue there, the stomach, has basically been kind of stretched out like a, like a balloon that's been overinflated, a rubber band that's been pulled too far, and it never will snap back to the way it was before. I need to start, you know, doing for me now, you know, just getting my body back the way I wanted it to be, and, and I never, I really didn't think of plastic surgery, but I, I did my research, and, and, and I'm glad I did. I'm, I'm just so happy that I did. You know, you, you see all the effort you're putting in, you want to see the results, and that's, that's frustrating for any individual to do something and not not see the results from it and that's where she was but then after the surgery I mean once you get that that tightness back and fix the tissues that were stretched out by pregnancy then it just adds that you know whole measure back to her exercise that you know, she wanted to have from before. The flat stomach it, it is there I, I've been we've gone on two cruises already and I've been in my bikini I haven't been able to do that in a long time since before my competition so that was back in 1999 so I hadn't been able to do that in a while I'm full force working out uh, doing ab exercises, working out with my husband, and running, jogging, just doing all the things that, that I used to do, but now I can show it off and I can wear a half tank top, you know, to work out in, you know? It's like things I didn't think I would be able to do again. Thanks to Dr. Bancroft, yeah. If you've had a doctor help change your life, we'd love to hear about it. Send us an email at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. My symptoms are, you know, I don't want to walk on the ball of my foot. Uh, it, shoot, it shoots sharp pains up my leg. I mean, it feels like a nerve's being pinched off. Wanda's a patient that presented to my office complaining of shooting pain, uh, you know, down her heel, upper leg, and uh, so immediately I started thinking maybe there's a possibility of a nerve, uh, you know, compression. I told him my symptoms. He suspected what it was. He wheeled in a little mini ultrasound machine, did it right there on the spot, and you know, diagnosed the problem. And we set up surgery because I had already tried other treatments with other doctors and it didn't work and we were done. This is your ankle joint and you have a major nerve that courses through here. There's a natural tunnel. It's called your tarsal tunnel. What happens is the tunnels get real tight and they clamp on the nerve are the protective covering, which we call the flexor inaculum, the nerve tends to get stuck underneath it. So what happens is when the nerve gets compressed, it's extremely painful. What he's trying to do is avoid that numbness, and for most people it works. You know, you basically take what's pinching the nerve off away, and you make room for it, and life goes on. And the advantage of this is, like, it's not a surgery where you're really held up for a while, where you have to, you know, stay at home and you can't put weight, because I want the patient walking as soon as they can because I don't want those tunnels to tighten up or to close up. So I want to make sure the nerves can glide. Wanda had tarsal tunnel surgery. Uh, she comes back to the office three to five days later and uh, just dressing change. No need for x-rays because we're not doing any bone work, uh, which is great too, because if you're not doing bone work, it's not necessarily as painful. There's less swelling. Uh, and so two weeks later, sutures are out and she's walking on her own. I'm very happy. I've actually recommended him and, and all my friends that have gone to him and they've had more extensive things done to them where you know you're reattaching muscles and putting in screws, you know, really crazy stuff. Um, they, they also think he's awesome. The side effect that one has from nerve decompression is not pain. It's lack of sensation. 
it's numbness. And that's temporary because with time they regain their sensation, but it's a really easy recovery and it provides immediate relief. And don't forget for more information on all the great doctors you see on today's show, head to the website, the place to go, bestdocsnetwork.com. Indeed it is. And you know, a lot of us suffer from allergies, but our next best doctor is an allergist, Dr. Lynn Dickens, who can probably help. Pretty much allergies has been pretty much since I was born. Uh, and then uh, it, I guess it really came in more in focus when I was diagnosed with uh, asthma and, uh, when I was two years old. Uh, and because it's, uh, my asthma is an uh, allergy trigger. And basically it's been uh, pretty much a full battle since then. <laughs> in the case of asthma, what you have is a, an inflammation that takes place inside the lung. And this is a normal lung here, which is nice and pink and open. And when a person has an asthma attack, they have a muscle that just actually contracts. And it causes the, all of the um, inflammatory cells to come in. And the, the mucous membranes get very thickened. And over time, they can actually become fibrotic and they're scarred. Um, but the real important thing to notice is how red and angry it is compared to the other side. You know, as a kid, um, back then, as you know, I just didn't have the knowledge or understanding of what was happening. It's just I knew it's like if I got gone outside, did things, uh, any activity, you know, it was like you know my you know allergies start kicking in, uh, then which then caused my asthma to trigger. Uh, yeah, I would really hinder uh, my activity as, as a kid. And but I actually came into Kenny's life in 1997. He was 13 years old and he weighed 285 pounds. And um, he was uh, homeschooled, I believe, shortly thereafter because he was sick so much with his asthma that he you know, couldn't go to school. And yeah, my as between the asthma and allergies, I mean, everything was just haywire. I mean, it's like literally, you know, we're trying different you know, combinations of meds every few months because just trying to find that right combination and it finally found that right combo and it's been, been pretty good so far. We got him well controlled and now we're trying to put him on allergy shots so that we can eventually get him off the Zolaire. And hopefully with the weight loss and everything else, he will be on very little medication. Especially with Dr. Dickens, I mean, it's, you know, she sits down, she takes, you know, walks you through everything. She takes you know, time, she doesn't rush you through, um, or you know, you're, just not, you're not just a number. I mean, she really gets to know you, gets to know your history, and you know, just that personal one-on-one -on -one that you know, I don't see with other doctors. Cynthia came in before her wedding to lose areas that were difficult for her to fit into her dress and for her honeymoon. She um, knew that the cool sculpting was something that she could have permanent loss that was noticeable and that was uh, non-invasive. My procedure was right before, well, three months before my wedding. And um, I really had been working out hard, trying to get in that wedding dress and look perfect. Um, so I needed little areas around my back. My little back fat um, would not go away. And so I asked that that be taken care of. Most patients will have a noticeable uh, permanent loss of fat. It reduces the fat by freezing the fat cells, crystallizing them. Your body then takes it away with an inflammatory response. And over a several month period, you'll have noticeable effects. We wanted something that didn't have long lasting side effects and so that it had minimal downtime. And so people can do this on their lunch hour per se. In addition, we wanted something that was cost effective and it wouldn't cost as much as a surgery as well. With the cool sculpting, what it help for me is the fact that like you have it's it's not painful it's non-invasive and it's done I mean you really see results in two to three weeks I mean I am a little impatient so <laughs> it was one of those things that I wasn't really waiting willing to wait for but I would for three months thing is I saw results in two to three weeks and then continue to see results three months later so there's that factor I mean and the painless thing is very big so I like that Definitely it's something that if someone's not looking for a large area for liposuction per se, then this would be perfect for that. Um, it doesn't take the place of liposuction by any means, but it certainly can work with it in addition to after treatment uh, or those patients that just don't want surgery. Wendy was able to do it and it was amazing. Like I mean, just for my second fit or my second to last fitting, 
there was a huge difference. They were able to actually take it in around my um, my bus lines. So it really was, it was significant. So it was really cool. Now to our next best doctor, and he's one of the best oral surgeons in the Houston area. It's Dr. Paul Metz, who helped one individual with a new smile. My teeth needed to all be extracted. They were crumbling, they were breaking, I couldn't chew my food. He's a professional, you know, an accountant, and he's certainly concerned about finances and how to structure his, his budget. And he was a guy that um, his lower teeth were worse off than the uppers. And so that was an area that he decided to focus on. I guess this started in 2009, and this really happened in kind of in two settings. So that in 2009, we did the lower, and in 2011, we did the upper. The, the bottom is all done, and I'm in the midst of having the prosthesis on the top done. And also with David, his concern uh, regarding his budget, we were able to do this without grafting. Previously, in the upper jaw, because of the maxillary sinuses, we would have to graft those areas in majority of cases that we were placing a full jaw worth of implants. Uh, but with the advent of cone beam CT, we're able to look at individuals from a three-dimensional standpoint radiographically ahead of time so as to know where the bone is so that we can position implants within that bone and avoid the need for sinus grafting and then subsequently lower his overall cost significantly as well as increase the predictability. No longer do I have to make sure that everything is in place where it's supposed to be in place. It's, I have, I have a new chance and a brand new set of teeth, and they don't hurt. It's, it's just satisfying to see him come back smiling, see him walking down the hallway, uh, you know, standing upright with their, their chin up, smiling, and, and, and being much more confident. So it, it, from a psychological standpoint, outside of the health benefits that you see, uh, the mental health benefits are, are significant. I'm a CPA. I meet with clients and uh, of high net worth clients. Appearance is important to me. It's certainly not of the utmost importance, but it's important to me. And I don't want to be embarrassed by a, by a crumbling smile line. It's a wonderful, wonderful solution. I thought, okay, well the only thing that's going to be available is I'm going to have to go in and have my tubes tied or my husband was going to go have to go in and have a vasectomy. I didn't realize there was any other long-term solution. And having the IUD in and having it changed out every couple of years just wasn't an option that wasn't necessary. We had decided our family was complete. Gina is a, uh, a registered nurse, very aware of the potential risks of surgery and of uh, hormonal birth control and was looking for a way to not have any more children with the least amount of risk associated. And I talked to Dr. Liebman about a long-term solution and he said, uh, have you ever heard of the Escher? You should come in and have it done. It's a uh, minimally invasive procedure that uh, is done in the office under local anesthesia most of the time. It involves pl the placement of a tiny microcoil into the fallopian tube. We do it on both sides, and it, uh, the body's own tissue will then grow into the microcoil and form a mechanical obstruction of the tubes. No cutting, no hormones, and almost no blood loss at all. Didn't require a hospital stay. Didn't require my husband going in and having a procedure done, which he wasn't really thrilled about having. So it was really, really easy. No downtime, no pain, <laughs> no you know overnight stay. Um, I didn't, didn't have to worry about it. The kids were home in the afternoon and I was fine when they got out of school. When the procedure is done correctly, the 10-year data says that it's 99.7% effective. So 
We seldom ever see a, a pregnancy failure. I wish that more women knew that this was an option that was out there, that you can make the appointment, you can come into your physician's office, you can have it done during the day with little to no downtime and have it be just as effective as an, as an overnight, you know, tubal ligation stay in the hospital. She was just delighted she didn't have to worry about birth control anymore and certainly not the risks of hormone therapy uh, associated with, uh, with the contraceptives anymore. Are you having trouble sleeping? Do you wake up rested? Sleep is important. It's a time when we consolidate uh, memory, we resolve conflicts, and we rest those aching bones and muscles and help our mind get back to normal from the wear and tear of the day before. So what's the best way to get a good night's sleep? First of all, avoid caffeine after 5 or 6 p.m. in the evening. Avoid alcohol near bedtime. Although it may make you feel sleepy, you're not getting quality sleep when you drink alcohol. And you're also not getting all those things about consolidating memory and resolving conflict when you drink alcohol to help you get relaxed to sleep. There's lots of medications for uh, helping you sleep. However, the prescription medicines are ones that should not be taken on a regular basis. They can become a little bit habit forming. Some of the best medications for being able to sleep are the antihistamines that you can buy over the counter. There's many brand names and they work in a wonderful way. Plus, you don't get addicted to them. So have a good night's sleep, don't snore too loud, and exercise regularly. That'll help you sleep a lot better. If you've had a doctor help change your life, we'd love to hear about it. Send us an email at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. My son is seven years old and he has really severe eczema. And because of that, he has battled with um, bad staph infections over the years. His eczema became more severe over time and it became what we call lichenified or thick. And so we were having difficulty controlling the atopic dermatitis and secondarily, he was developing skin infections on top of the atopic dermatitis. And about eight months ago, he developed a really bad staph infection and usually we can kind of keep it under control by doing bleach baths or just finally getting an, an antibiotic for it. So we had made an appointment with Dr. Golly, his dermatologist, to go ahead and get an antibiotic. And when we went to see him, he said, um, before we do this, let me introduce you to this new product and have you try it out first before we have to do the antibiotics. Beginning in May, we started to implement uh, CLN Body Wash, which was a product that we were currently studying in atopic patients who had recurrent skin infections. Actually, after a week of using it, I noticed his skin kind of was showing some improvements. It started clearing up. And then by the time we went and saw him two weeks later for our follow-up visit, Andon's skin was almost all the way clear. So we continued to use it, and now we use it about once a week just as a precaution. He can use the product himself. I don't kind of have to measure the bleach out, stuff like that. He just kind of does it in the shower. Um, it lathers up like a soap. We can travel with it. We've taken a few vacations. You know, we just throw it in the suitcase with everything else. He went from a very severe patient to more of a uh, mild to moderate patient. And in the realm of atopic dermatitis, that is a huge improvement. And what it means to the family is that this child can sleep better. It also means to this family that the dynamics change in the house. Parents can often get the rest that they well deserve and the kids can function in school a lot better. His skin just continues to get clearer and clearer. And so far in the last eight months, he has not had another breakout and his skin has look, looks the best it's ever looked. Well, that'll do it. That'll wrap up another edition of the Best Dogs Network, featuring some of the best physicians from the Houston area that are helping to change people's lives. And the place to go to find a lot of these doctors, of course, the Best Dogs Network website. That's bestdocsnetwork.com. And if you have a question or comment for us, please email us at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. There you go. So long, everyone. We will see you next week.